uh, one of the other things we can do here is under um, data entry, we can control um, some things about what we can put in this number. So it's a double precision representation, but when we click on this and let it let it wait for a moment, it's taking longer than I thought. Uh, we get some options for how um, the formatting of this number is going to work. So it's a double precision number, so floating decimal point. Uh, we can change how it looks a little bit. Uh, there's the label. We could give it a better label. Not much better, perhaps. We can make it enabled. Of course, it's enabled. He can disable it as well if you had to. The data type has uh, been selected here. Data entry is useful, though, because um, by default, it goes to quite large numbers, but you can turn off the limits, uh, the default limits, and you can actually put in a range of numbers here, a minimum value of, I don't know, 2 and a maximum value of 17,000 if that's what it takes, and you can make it so that it coerces that. So basically, even though this number can represent much bigger and smaller numbers, we're limiting it to within this range. Also the increment, maybe we could change that to 2. And, um, and when we set that, it means that when we, we go to work this number, the increment goes by twos now, you notice? And it only goes down to a little, uh, minimum value of two. If you want to put in minus five, you can't, because the minimum we set was two. If you want to go to 18,000, you can't, because the maximum we set was 17,000. That can be useful. Uh, I'm going to go on... Well, I guess I'll just leave that. It doesn't much matter. Um, oh, also the display format. We can control the number of decimal places or significant digits, which can be can be handy as well. Uh, so it's a numeric. Under the display format, we can choose it to be, force it to be in scientific notation uh, or SI notation, which is basically engineering notation, I think, or uses a little um, uh, Ks and Ms, K for thousand, M for mega don't use it much. Usually you leave it as floating point or automatic lets it choose. If I force it to be floating point, um, I can control either the significant digits or the digits of precision, which means decimal points. And I can turn off hide trailing zeros. So you see this controls the number of decimal points. If I force it to be in scientific notation, and I make it significant digits, I can actually control the, the actual significant digits. So this can be handy to, to control how numbers appear. Documentation is another place to get at the description and tooltip that we attached to this control. And uh, that'll do. So these are numbers, and you go, well, what am I going to do with these numbers? Over here we can we can write a program that does things to them. Let's say what we want to do is take a number and uh, do some math on it. Make it a bigger number. So maybe what I'll do is I'll take a number and I'll multiply it by 2 and write, uh, make a program that, that does that. It's not a very interesting program. So over here in the block diagram if I right click on the block diagram, I get a different palette. This is the functions palette here. This is stuff for programming with. When I right click in the gray front panel, I get the controls palette. So this is controls. And this is functions. Functions are things that go on the block diagram. Controls actually should be controls and indicators is stuff that goes on the front panel. So in this, I, I've got this set up so that it's the um, the basic uh, or express. What is it called? If I pull this down, uh, it's the programming palette. Is what I have by default. There's a whole bunch of other ones in here uh, for various complicated things that are built into LabVIEW, but the programming one gives you most of the basic stuff that you need most commonly. Um, so if I right click here and look at the, the programming um, palette, I have some structures. This includes things like loops and case structures and various other things, including a math script thing where you can type some math in. 
I also have a functions palette for array type things. I can do things to an array, I can get the size, I can reorder an array, I can do various things to an array. Um, I have a bunch of Boolean controls where I can look um, and compare things with AND and OR and NOT and various other logical type functions. There's also constants, uh, a true and a false constant. And I have a numeric uh, function palette that has a bunch of quite basic math functions in it. So I can add two numbers or subtract two numbers and basically these are all things that you drag and you put on the diagram and you can wire them up. And you can move things around. This object here, this function, it's in LabVIEW it's called a node. We often call them functions as well and you get them by right clicking and going to the functions palette and finding what you want and you'll find all of these various things to do, various things to data types, adding numbers, subtracting numbers, uh, all sorts of other things and you put them on the diagram and then wire them up which I'll, I'll show you when we get to it. Uh, this is very basic math that's in here. If you want more complicated math, uh, for instance exponents or trigonometry functions, they're not in here. For those, you have to go to, um, it's not in this programming menu, you've got to pull this down, and there's all these other function palettes in here. There's one for measurement stuff, because LabVIEW is very often used for data acquisition and control. So there's a, a lot of functions that have to do with um, interacting with machines. We're not using much of those in this course. But down here is well, mathematics. So it includes the numeric palette with all our basic math that we, we just saw, uh, but also a bunch of other stuff. There's some so-called elementary math. Let me see. Mathematics. Elementary math, it has trigonometry and exponential functions and hyperbolic functions, whatever those are. We don't need them very often, but we do need trig functions and exponential functions. Here's quite a handy one. If you want to uh, have a number to the power of a number, another number, this function called power of x is hidden in here. There's a, a bunch of other ones here. Uh, and you're looking at these boxes and you're not sure how to work them. You kind of wish you had some help. And the way to get that is control H. Control H gives you this um, context sensitive help, a little short small box of help. And whenever you hover your cursor over something, it tells you what help is available for that. I hovered over this a number. Do, do you remember when we created this, we, we gave it uh, a label and a description. The description shows up in this help function. But of course it also gives you help on built-in LabVIEW functions. So if I hover it over this add node or add function, it gives us the basics. It says, yeah, there's two inputs, x and y, and the output is x plus y. It's for adding two numbers together. So when we're going looking for functions, it could be helpful to have this window open to help see briefly what the function does. So we'll go back into this um, math elementary uh, exponential toolbox. And you see as I, as I hover my cursor over the various functions that I might select, the context sensitive help tells me briefly what it does. x to the power of y, it's called power of x. You give it a number x, and you give it a number y, and it outputs x to the power of y, which sometimes is just what you need. There's lots of other functions uh, built in here, uh, but they generally have to do with specialized LabVIEW things for communicating with machines and data acquisition and processing and things like that. Uh, if we go back just to our basic um, programming palette that we see all the time. We saw the numeric. If we carry on, there's Boolean functions. Uh, we saw that. There's string functions, which include string constants, so a place where you can type some text um, right in the program. Oh, there's a function that gives you the length of a string. There's a function for joining multiple strings together into one string. Um, there's functions for extracting part of a string or searching for a, a substring within a string or various various other things that you can do with strings, string data types. And we have a, uh, a comparison function palette for comparing numbers equal to, not equal, greater than, greater than, less than, equal to zero, etc. 
uh, including the very, very interesting select case function down here, um, which is a function that you give it uh, two different things. You give it one thing and another thing, and depending on whether something is true or false, one of those two things goes through. That sounds a little vague, and we'll need to see some examples on how to use that later. Uh, and then there's lots more functions for, oh, stuff about uh, time and date. Um, timing functions, uh, file functions, but these are the basic ones that we'll be using are, are the structures and the numeric and the boolean and the comparison and a little bit of the array functions. Uh, we need some tools now as well. We haven't really seen the tool bar yet and it's a fairly basic thing we need to know about. It's under view tools palette. There's no shortcut key to get it unfortunately. And there's this thing that pops up. And it's a set of tools for editing and operating um, a LabVIEW VI. The main thing is this little green light at the top, if you turn on as automatic tool selection, then what happens is LabVIEW guesses what kind of tool you want depending on where your cursor is and what you seem to be doing. So if I want to move something, I want um, the editing tool. If I get close to this, it assumes that's what I want and I get the editing tool. But if I want to um, start wiring things up, I'll get a wiring tool if I get close. See, my cursor changes to the wiring tool here. The wiring tool looks like a little spool of wire, and it lets me run a wire from um, basically a controller indicator's terminal to the input and output terminals of a function. These tools, uh, the most common ones are um, the operate tool, little finger looking tool for basically for operating, for um, entering numbers, um, for modifying um, things when you're running the program. Beside it is different. This is the editing tool, and it's for moving stuff and resizing things. And then there's a text tool for editing text, which can include changing numbers or uh, clicking on a label to change a label, uh, or even just um, typing some text just floating around on the diagram to provide some um, basic documentation. There's the wiring tool that's really only applicable over here in the diagram, and that's pretty much all we need. These tools we don't use very often. Um, oh, there's a, a, a paintbrush tool down here for changing the color of things. Uh, you can play with that as much as you want, and you can, you can recolor stuff if you want. I'm going to undo those two changes because they're freaking me out. Um, I don't like the automatic tool selection, so I turn it off. Um, that means i got to go and choose which tool I want all the time, except that in LabVIEW, if you hit the tab button, you see how it toggles you through, not all of the tools, the four most common tools. That means in the panel, it toggles through the operate tool, then the editing tool, then the text tool, and then, slightly unfortunately, the paint tool, which I don't need very often. If I'm in the block diagram, it toggles me through the operate tool, the edit tool for moving stuff around and resizing, the text tool, um, and the wiring tool, but not the paint tool. So the tab button does the same toggling motion, slightly different results depending if you're in the diagram or the front panel. If the front panel, you get the paint tool. If you're in the diagram, you get the wiring tool. I prefer this method myself, but you can, maybe you'll prefer the automatic tool selection.